right, it's Telfo. We're here at Adelaide International Raceway for Street Machine Drag Challenge 2017. Drag Challenge number four. The aim of Drag Challenge is to see who has the fastest streetcar in Australia by putting the entrance through a gruelling road course. Today's registration day. The guys come in, register their cars with us, get them checked by Andra to make sure they're safe. And we start racing here at Adelaide on Monday, then Tuesday, Mildura, Wednesday at the quarter mile at Swan Hill, Thursday, eighth mile at Portland, then back here Friday night at Adelaide International Raceway for the climax of the event. They have to drive between each track. There are no car trailers. There are no support vehicles. This is all about real street cars. And the other great thing about the event is the camaraderie. Already we've seen guys who've toasted their gearboxes on the way, done a ball joint. They put up their hand on Facebook and said, guys, can you help me out? In five minutes, they've had a re response. Those cars are fixed already. And that's what this is all about. Racers helping out other racers. Let's go check some of them out now. All right, we're here at Adelaide International Raceway with Zoran from Competition Engines in Melbourne. Mate, welcome to Drag Challenge. It's the first time you've got two cars here. Um, yeah, we've actually got three. We've got this twin turbo XA, um, 600 Cuba. We have a uh, small block nitrous XB coupe over there. And we've got John Stumpos twin turbo Cortina that's way over there. It's gone 8.0 um, and hopefully run a 7 over the weekend. It's a Windsor car. Yeah. So he could be the fastest Ford here. Hopefully, yeah, it should be if he makes it to the end and, you know, everything uh, goes his way, potentially it could be, yeah, no doubt. Has he done a lot of road time in that Cortina? Yeah, look, that combo, we probably built it five or six years ago. It's gone 80, 173 on pump. Now it's on E85, had like a 61 mil turbo. It's got about 63 and a half now. So it made another 200 at the, at the rear. So it's definitely got enough to run an easy seven. It's just if you can keep it, you know, sort of straight and not up in the air, you know. Yeah, so it should be a good thing. We're really happy to see Paul's XA here. Talk us through some of the packaging considerations that you had to had to take into account. Pretty much he dropped the car after competition ends and straight after the drag challenge last yes. year. And here we are, well, ready to roll. Well, you know, he drove it from, into us and then you went to Tassie in the boat, on the boat. Um, so he gave us a task because the motor was already in there. So Tim over here that works for us. He fabricated everything in the car, he wired everything in the car, then the motor was removed, we built the motor, we dynoed the motor, um, it made 2100 horsepower and 1800 foot pounds. We could have went more, you know, it only was a 25 or 6 pounder boost, but it was like three weeks out. We, Tim and the boys put it back in the car, finish odds and ends, you know, little issues, converter was too big, you know, this didn't fit, that and the other, so Tim's been going at it with other guys for the last three weeks till you know, ridiculous hours and we pretty much started it. We put the, we welded the intrusion bars in yesterday at about 12 or 1 o'clock. We took it up and down the street for five minutes and laid on the trail and he left. So we're here now. We're going to take it for a burn now. We're out on the highway and just do a bit of tuning. So tomorrow we can race it and we'll just start small and we'll creep up on it, you know? Yeah. And just pump fuel deal, yeah? Pump fuel to about 15 PSI. We'll get our head around it. We don't know much about the arsen. Paul says it worked with his old engine, went 9 -0. So we just went over it and made sure it's safe and changed the gear ratio. So if it works, well, we're going to crank it up and then we'll put race fuel in it if we get there, you know? See, so yeah, I love this coupe. It is so tough. No doubt. It's, we've had it, you know, around for ages at the workshop. Um, it's gone 970 aspirated about 10 years ago, which not many people were doing that 10 years ago. And now we've put a nitrous kit on. It's gone 9-1 at Heathcote with 150 shot. Now we're going to give it a bit more here, maybe 250, see if we can chase an eight. If the track's good, I'm going to lean on it, you know? So we'll see what happens, yeah? Yeah. And how are you going to go? Are you get towing a trailer with this thing? No, nah, no trailer. Um, those radials, pump fuel. So we just pump fuel at the servos and just race fuel to race it. And like now we just drained it and put the race fuel in it. it it's done a lot of miles. Like this car drives. It goes from Melbourne to Geelong. It goes to all the car shows. It's done 10 years of work. Hopefully it'll make it for another week before it's time for a freshen up, you know? Yeah. We just want to support the event and um, hopefully it goes um, further and further every year, you know? Maybe I'll bring the ZD next year, you know? That'd be cool. Yeah, no doubt. We need a limo class. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> There are heaps of new competitors here at Drag Challenge who've never been at the event before. We're here with Glenn from Canberra. 
He's bought a Mustang back Celica. Mate, tell us about the combo. So, at the moment, it's got a 1.5J, which is a bit of a hybrid from an NA Supra bottom end and a Sora head. Um, got the A340, big converter, and Borg Warner diff down the back with some 389 gears, so should go alright. For us non-Toyota people, that means a 2J bottom end, yep. aspirated bottom yep. end, and a 1J turbo top end. Yeah, yep. it's got a couple of baby cams in there and a 3582R hanging off the side, and we're only going to run wastegate pressure for the week, I think, so probably 14 pound. How much power is it making? Uh, I'm not sure at the moment. It has made 340 kilowatts on ethanol and about 19 pound, but this week we're just going to run on around on petrol. Way easier to get and more fuel economy and I don't need that much power. And have you done many laps in the car? Uh, it's been to Toyota Nationals a few times and they've got like an eighth mile strip that they use, but it's like a goat track does these ones and it's super duper slippery. Not a prep track. I've been to one prep track in Sydney before and the car ran really well and I was addicted from that moment. It was, I had to go drag racing, so here we are. How fast? I went a 10.7 at 134. First time down a quarter mile? Yeah. My boss wasn't that happy, he reckons he's been working towards 12 for a, <laughs> for a few years. That's very embarrassing for him. So why do you drag challenge? Like this is literally the hardest thing you can do with a street car. This is my street car. This is what I love to drive. So to put some Ks on it, go for an awesome drive, check out all the pubs, um, priorities, right? Yep. That was it. Just wanted to, yeah, be a part of it, see if I could make the whole week and, you know, drive from Canberra to Adelaide and home again. Like we didn't trailer it here, we towed the trailer with it. That is extremely staunch. Welcome aboard. It's great to have you here. G'day, we're inside Shane Dale's Sandman. This is another New Carter Street Machine Drag Challenge. It isn't a New Carter Street Machine. It was featured in the mag many years ago. It's been to Summer Nats. It's been in the top 60. It's done some nostalgia racing. But, uh, mate, what possessed you to take this angry, beautifully done street machine and put it through five days of torture? Well, it was always on our bucket list. And um, this year when we saw that it was starting in our hometown, we just uh, couldn't resist, jumped on it, and always wanted to get a good clean quarter mile pass and never done it, so uh, why not do it on Drag Challenge? And a panel van's a pretty good vehicle to do it in. Yeah, a big heavy aerodynamic brick, um, but who cares, it's my baby. Um, yeah, we've had it for 22 years, so uh, we've been to a lot of places together, so this will be one more thing on the list of things we've done. It's got a fair bit of room in the back, so it's you know fairly practical from that point of view. Yep, yeah, driving from town to town, racing in it, and then sleeping in the back at night time. So, doing the uh, full drag challenge. Is there, is there anything you're worried about? Uh, yeah, everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this car's always had a problem with overheating, so I think I've sorted that out. Um, yeah, I've put some really large tires on the back to try to get the revs down on the highway to save some fuel because this is a very thirsty car. And we're doing a lot of miles, so um, yeah, that's about it. How many cubes? Uh, 502. Well, we look forward to seeing what it does down the quarter, and uh, we wish you and your wife Carly all the best. Thank you very much. We're here with Jared Wood, who's just rolled through scrutineering. This HQ1 tunnel behind us has the quickest pass in drag challenge history. How's the car running at the moment? Yeah, pretty good. Yep. Yep. Uh, we made a few changes, so uh, turbos, gearbox, dip, so it yeah, should be faster, hopefully. Awesome. Any testing in the lead up to the event? How's the form of the car? Do you know that? Yeah, pretty good. We went 760 at Swan Hill, so we just keep pretty quiet and do what we do, country bumpkins. Give us a bit of an overview on the car mechanically. Um, we've still got a dandy engines, uh, 595 cubic inch. We've gone to 94 mil Garrett's this year. We've changed gearboxes. Um, yeah, change diff, and yeah, we'll see what happens. It's got the radio back on, so I hope we can make it work. Happy days, and what's the goal for Dre Challenge? Are you here to win the thing? Uh, I just want to run fast. Yeah, it's not about the overall win for me, it's about being the best that I can be. So, we'll see how we go. We found the WA guys. This is Lorenzo, he's going to speak on behalf of all of them, because some people are rock stars and are flying into Adelaide with their crew in the car already here, so that's a bit flash. Mate, what makes you guys do it? It's a long way to come, and then you're going to torture your car for five days. Why do you do it? 
Um, mainly the experience, to be honest. But um, I've been watching, following Drag Week, obviously in the, in the states for a long time, and drag, Street Machine Drag Trons itself. So um, wanted to come last year, but didn't get the combo completed in time, which was the supercharged deal. And decided before this year we'll change it to twin turbo. So we're all here at the moment, and yeah, see how we go this week. A oh, good weekend away with the boys, or a week away with the boys. Yeah, well, we've been on the road for three days already, so um, we've had yeah, six of us driving across Australia, so it's been a good good weekend so far, and just see how the week goes. And of the WA cars that are here, which is the quickest one? Uh, the blue VZ behind me, which is Josh's car, it's around 8.23. Wow. Yeah, so pretty, um, pretty decent combo in that one, so we'll see how we go. Obviously, we're going to turn them down for the first few days of this, and then um, the last day, if they're all still living, we'll, um, we'll see how we go, see if we can get some times down. And how are you expecting your car to go? Um, pretty well, as long as the engine itself lives. Obviously not being a very high budget build, um, it should be fine. But um, yeah, like I said, we'll turn them down, probably run mid uh, like 930s, 920s for the week. And then the last day I'll just try to put it back in the eights and see if we can go PBs with it. And do you do the tune yourself? I do a little bit myself, but um, Jeff Johnson from Street Built in, in WA looks after all these cars. So um, obviously Holly Air Fire and all that. And yeah, he, he's pretty much got that all down packed now. So. You've got him on speed dial. If, if uh, the temperature goes one way or the other, you need to amp something up. He's actually one of these Hollywood guys that are uh, rocking in at the airport right now. So um, he's yeah, he's cruising with us for the week, and he obviously wouldn't miss it for the world. So he's um, on his way down, and he's got the tuning duties for the week. So we'll see how I go there. Should be good. Today is self it's day one of Street Machine Drag Challenge. It is going to be a warm one. They're predicting it'll get up to like 34 degrees, but it'll be a lot hotter down on the track. And that's going to make life tough for a lot of these guys. It's going to test out their cooling systems on the road. But on the track, we're going to see all kinds of trouble with traction, especially the guys on radials. Big tire guys might get it a bit easier. Let's go and see how they fared. Brendan Cherry and his twin turbo big block HK Monaro. How's your day panning out? Yeah, not too bad so far. We found a few gremlins, which the boys are uh, working on it now, trying to get it fixed. And uh, hopefully go out and make another pass if we can. So. What's been your quickest pass so far? Uh, 9.20 this morning. Car's running the eights before, so a few tenths off your PB. Yep, yeah, definitely too hot up here for us, but yeah, we're finding it hard to hook up. We'll get there. Edmondson, how's your day panning out so far, mate? Very well so far. Um, we're having a great time with um, it's, a, it's a new combo, a new ECU in the car, everything's new. I haven't raced since last year's drag challenge, so I'm getting back into the seat myself. But um, we've done three passes, we've greatly improved over those three passes. We just ran a 9.2 at 100. 57 I think it was and last year's PB was 9.6 yeah big improvement there so we've still got plenty to go tell us all about the setup 
Um, it's a small block Ford 383 turbo, uh, single, large single turbo, power glide, 9 inch with floaters, 35 spline axles, all the usual street car stuff. Nice. And uh, you're an Adelaide local, I believe? Uh, yeah, I'm a Kiwi, but I live, I live five minutes from the track, so this for me is really good starting here this year. It's, it's worked out really well. Cool. But, and uh, on you being a Kiwi, is that the significance of the, uh, the beach as whale on your trailer? Yeah, yeah. The, we call the car the whale, the, the, the white whale, amongst other things. And um, when the beach daz thing came out, being a Kiwi, everyone was hassling me, you know, beach daz. So, yeah, it's, it's, people love it. You can't be too serious about this sort of thing. I mean, you can, but I'm not in the higher end of the class. So, you know, you're here to have a good time with your mates, go fast, get lots of racing in and just have fun. <laughs> We're back here with Jared Wood at the end of day one of Street Machine Drag Challenge. Uh, he's one of a bunch of genuine seven second cars that have been running in the eights. Tell us uh, what's going on. Uh, I think Scotty's just set us up. I think it's a no prep series, same as last year. Um, yeah, we struggled on the first day last year too. Where'd you end up ET was? Uh, I think we ended up 8.29 at 175, but yeah, we just power skidded at half track, so we sort of can't pull any more power out. Yeah, is what it is. What sort of way did you attack changing the setup of the car to try and get it down the track today? Oh, we just had to pull all the power out, try and get it down. So that still didn't work. But you know, we got a time, and it's sort of hard because you got to have the turbos spinning because they're such big turbos. You know, like you can't really take any more boost or power out off the line, otherwise it just roll over. But anyway, we'll be right. right mate. Still got another four days. We're here with Bubba Medlin at uh, Adelaide International Raceway, the reigning dra drag challenge champion, and um, mate, it's been a pretty tough day. That it has. It just has not. <laughs> it has not worked at all today. Um, we can't get it on boost to start with, and then when it comes on, it comes on hard. We did 180 Jesus, 180 mile an hour today, which is pretty cool. But yeah, we need to sort some issues out. I think we did an 8.8 8 at 160 miles per hour, or something like that. So. If we can get it to come on boost at the start, yeah, but not running a good number today has put us behind nearly a second, I think. Yep. So I don't know how we're going to go on the eighth because <laughs> we can't get the low down stuff, but yeah, we needed more time. <laughs> it was a mad rush to finish it. So, oh well, we'll give it another crack and see how we go. At least I made the t shirt on the back, so I'm pretty happy with that. Too right, how good does it look? <laughs> it looks bloody banger. <laughs> does it, do you reckon it makes me look fat? The tur new turbo system looks killer. Tell us about that. Um, well, Brett from All Race spent a good month and a half doing it all. He's been on the car full time and start to finish, uh, and he made it all fit, which is unbelievable. Like, if you have a good look at it, it's Mickey Mouse. So, yeah. and uh, significantly bigger turbos than what you had before, and yes. got them under the bonnet too. Yes, and that's what I said. You know, like they're twin 88s. If we can get it to come up on boost, it will work a treat. So, yeah. Good to see you keeping it real for the, the plastic brigade, mate. I like yeah, it. Yeah, well, this weekend, if we can make it work, if it's going to break, it's going to break this weekend. Hopefully back here on fr uh, yeah, Friday, about this time, it'll break. <laughs> After it runs a deep seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, it if it can run a deep <laughs> seven, yeah. Back up time here at day one at Street Machine Drag Challenge and Adam Rogash, like a lot of the front runners, a lot of the radial guys has been really struggling for grip out there mate. Yeah it's been a pretty greasy day, um, finding it hard to put power down, we're getting the mile per hour considering it's 40 plus degrees out here. Um, a lot of the guys like Bubba Medlin, uh, Mark Drew, Quinton Feast, myself are all kind of high 170 mile per hour, um, so that's good but trying to get out of the hole is just, just killing us all. And is that mostly due to the heat or? 
I would say it's due to the heat. Yeah, the track's just really greasy because of the heat that's that's put down on top of it. So. On radials, what's what's your strategy? Like, how do you dial back the power or muck around with the suspension? Where do you go? Uh, look, we it's not even a suspension thing at the moment because we were just blowing tyres off on the hit. The suspension wasn't even getting to work and we've put new suspension in to handle the power of the car. So if we're not throwing power at it, the suspension doesn't work the way we need it to work if we do hook up. So on the couple of times that we did manage to hook up on very low RPM and basically no boost out of the hole, um, then the suspension was doing very well for, for what it was. Everything else, we were just blowing tyres off on the hit. And where did you end up ET-wise? Uh, 840 at 176 mile per hour from memory. So I think we're in fourth at the moment, not where we want to be, but, but we're moving on. So. And how many laps do you think you did today? Too many. Way too many. So I think we did enough for the whole lot of drag challenge in one day. But. And uh, right now packing up the gear, about to head off to Mil- Mildura tonight? Yeah, so we're going to go to Mildura. I've got Chris from McDonald Brothers Racing. I've got Johnny Piller from Powerhouse Engines with me. Um, so we're just going to take it nice and cruisy up the hills and um, I guess wait until dark, I guess, and uh, go get something to eat and, and refresh ourselves and just drive nice and slowly up to Mildura in the heat. Telfo, welcome to Street Machine Drag Challenge 2017. It's day two. We're at Mildura at the Sunset Strip. It's an eighth mile facility. Really cool track. We've come up from Adelaide overnight. Some of the competitors had a bit of a rough time, had a few mechanical dramas, but most of them have got them fixed and they're all here, ready to race. Adelaide was a tough, tough day. Difficult conditions for the races. At the end of the day, number one, we had Mark Drew in that crusty Tirana. Followed by two-time winner Quinton Feast in his Toronto. Followed by Jared Wood in the one tonner. They all ran eight twos. Really, really tight. Tight as you like. It's going to be a tough day, so that lead is going to chop and change as the racers get out and try and put the power down on this really hot surface. Harry, how was your trip from Adelaide yesterday? Oh, it was interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, we left the track and thought the boat was on fire when I looked in the rear view mirror going to the servo, but the boat wasn't on fire. It was my transmission. And so we'd done a seal and opened the door and I got the servo and it was all bleeding and stuff. So then we rang the pub because the boys were pretty keen to have a pub meal. And as, you know, being Australian, when you go to the pub, you always work something out. So we went to the pub in Trutro and found these legends, Bosto's Garage, and they let us use their garage all night, and all their mates come round, and we had a big old shindig, and they let us drink their beer, and it was a fat time, so I just want to give a shout out, they're on Facebook, these dudes, check them out, they really saved our ass, so we did that, and then... Did they have a hoist? They had a hoist, and they had tools, and all things that make the job easy, that we didn't have to lay on the dirt, and lose bolts and stuff, so... How far out of Adelaide was that? That was 30 kilometres, so we're going well, so that was 3.30 or 4.30 this morning, we finished doing that, had a couple of hours sleep and then we drove in the 58 million degree heat, 
from there to here today and it was possibly the hottest I've ever been in my car ever. So I notice your engine is a lot closer to the firewall than it used to be and the exhaust pipes are very close to the firewall. It's a great idea of putting the turbos at the back and the things near the firewall and it's mint. Yeah, good. No, no pointing names or whatever, but yeah. And uh, how's it gone down the track? Uh, so we get some cloud cover because we're late and the track's hot, but if it, them big fat clouds there come over here, I think we can lay one down and we'll be somewhere near where we were yesterday, fourth or fifth or something, so fingers crossed. Let's send it. Let's get it done. fastest pass of the day first up was a little yellow four-cylinder Gemini he sort of dominated the uh, early sessions mate you had a ripper start to the day you set the fastest time in the morning session what's happened yeah look uh, we've had a little bit of an engine failure um, the car was fine the tune was fine uh, when I got off it after the finish line um, the engine had a little bit of a rattle we pulled the rock cover off and uh, what's happened is it's broken the timer chain tensioner um, and that has allowed the uh, cam timing to go right out of whack and uh, one of the valves and pistons has uh, had a little bit of a moment so it's a little bit of a munchy munch in there um, so unfortunately the car performed really well right up until I got off the gas I just sort of stayed on it. <laughs> it's a G-Series Isuzu engine uh, factory style engine the car has a full factory drive line uh, Gemini engine style Gemini gearbox and Gemini diff so the car's gone 860, uh, the pass today probably would have been about an 880 pass. So look, the car was on a march and um, it's a pity it's broke. Oh, it's so cool so having a cool four cylinder car here. Now you're stuck in Mildura, you guys are from Canberra, how are you going to get home? Look, um, one thing about the Gemini community, it's really good. Um, my co-driver we've got on Facebook and uh, one of the Gemini uh, local people has agreed to run my co-driver back down to Adelaide to uh, to get the tow car and the trailer. So I'm here for seven hours, eight hours, and uh, we'll load it up and uh, we'll head home. And I've learned so much th this year. So um, yeah, look, uh, first drag challenge. I've learned so much about the traveling, what the car does. Um, so look, I know much more and hopefully we'll make it next year. <laughs> here with Zorin from Competition Engines in front of Zorin's penthouse suite. Mate Paul Hamilton with the XA from Tassie. How did he go today? Yeah, he's had some fun. He drove here, no problem, from Adelaide. He ran a 5.91.24 and he's off the Swan Hill. He left about an hour or two ago, so he's stoked. He's happy to run a 5.90. Having trouble for ECU. We've got Haltech sending us another one tomorrow and hopefully we can turn it up. So we're going great, you know, so far so good. Yep. So in terms of all that cooling system stuff you did, everything you went into to make this a reliable car has paid off? No doubt, you know. We didn't do no testing, but it's all paid off. The car's going down the road. It's not wasting a lot of fuel. It's not getting hot. So far, 100%. He's happy. We're happy. It's all good. He's off to Swan Hill, which is pretty good. It means he won't be driving in the dark. He can get a good night's rest. And then he can hit the quarter mile at Swan Hill tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to ECU. We'll get some data. Then we'll turn it up a bit. It should run on mid eight. Soft. It's still on pump gas, you know? No race fuel yet. See how we go. You never know. Adam mate, that seemed like you ran about fifty passes in about ten minutes. Yeah, I think it was about four in about an hour. It wasn't much fun. Never give up, never say die, eh? Yeah, well, we didn't come here for nothing, did we? So we've got the right guys on the job and we've just been having fuel pump issues majorly. We pulled in at what, quarter past four this morning and then kept working on the car to, to get the fuel system sorted out and, and finally got a pass in at what, quarter to three. It's 
So what have you done to overcome the fuel issues at this stage? Zoran from Competition Engines was just come up to us today and uh, he had some magna fuels on board so we've put some magna fuels in um, which will see us through the rest of the week and, and hopefully have no more failures. <laughs> These conditions are brutal, and yesterday at Adelaide International Race, so that's probably the toughest day of drag challenge we've had yet. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, that and today, considering our issues that we had, but we we always have issues at Miltura, so we we busted our nut to get here early this morning and have everything ready, and then when the fuel pumps failed, it was just yeah heartbreaking by the time we overcome just high engine temps and stuff like that on the way here at 4 o'clock. I think it was still 30-odd degrees coming through here, so... It was still pretty warm. G'day, we're here with Donny Zirkus. He's from the great town of Shepparton in Victoria. He's brought the best looking car to Street Machine Drag Challenge this year, Bitchin Pro Street EK. Yesterday at Adelaide International Raceway, the car was a cracker, went really well. How fast did you go? 10.33. Unbelievable for an old Holden. Yeah, no, yeah, it went really nice and stuck all the way, all the way down. And how did the drive up to Mildura go? Uh, it wasn't without incident. Um, it took us obviously a long time to get here, and unfortunately we missed the cutoff by about five minutes. Uh, but Scott was uh, good enough to let us still continue. Obviously, we can't compete for uh, a position, but we just wrapped to be here anyway. So I mean, we pulled out everything to get here. I mean, you guys can see. We're minus the trailer and a bonnet, <laughs> which is down the road, but we just wanted to be part of it. So we thought, you know, if we're going to have a go at it, we're going to make sure we do the best we can do. So. I think I remember seeing a car very similar like this at one of the uh, ship, ship parties years ago. Is it a fresh car or, or an older car? No, it's an older car. Yeah, yeah, it would have been the one that you saw. Yeah, yeah, it's been through a couple of hands before I've got it. So, no, you're right. No, it's a badass car to turn that nasty, nasty car into a really killer uh, car that can do all this is, is a credit to you, mate. Yeah, thanks very much. Look, we, we appreciate it and we, like I said, we're wrapped just to be part of it. I mean, even Scotty let us let us come in, but look, we won't let people, not everybody down. We want to keep going right awesome. through. Great. So we'll spend time on it tonight and make sure in Swan Hill we can make a, a good clean pass and, and really have a go at it. Baba, what are you holding there, mate? Uh, it's it's a rod, and it's not the rod I'd rather have in my hand, that's for sure. Um, yeah, it looks like we had a small little issue. Uh, we're going to try and fix it, but yeah, we're just waiting for Harry to bring a TIG welder across, and we'll see what we can do. That pass actually looked pretty good at the start. Yeah, no, it felt mint. It started to come on strong, and then, uh, yeah, see you later, Charlie. Boom. So... Special custom awesome block is probably no longer something we can work with. Yeah, I might have to give give Craig Bennett a call and see what he can do to help me out. Maybe sponsor me a block or something. That'd be nice. Um, yeah, if uh, yeah if I can't get a block, I guess that's it for the Holden. So, but yeah, if he can get me a block, I'll um, I'll keep playing with it and yeah, keep going strong. <laughs> oh mate, it's a real shame. You're really on track to do something awesome this weekend, but. Uh, time was against you? Yeah, we finished the car like Friday, Saturday, had it on the dyno, made good power, but only up top, we didn't sort the bottom stuff out, we thought we'd do the track. Today we started bringing it in, you know, faster and faster, and it started to work near the end, and then, yeah, this part didn't like it.
Telfo. It's day three of Street Machine Drag Challenge. Last night, the competitors came down from Mildura to Swan Hill to this beautiful quarter mile facility. It's just been resurfaced and it is a really cool joint. There's a bit of attrition on the way here, but most of the competitors made it. It's much cooler today. So we're going to see some big times. However, the rain is coming. So everybody's getting in, getting their passes done and getting out of here. Yesterday at Mildura was brutal in terms of conditions, but we left with Quinton Feast on top, Mark Drew very close behind in second, and Jared Wood in the one tonner in third. Let's see how it pans out today, once the guys get down the quarter mile. We're at Swan Hill with Quinton Feast. Quinton's having a final weekend. He's done this once or twice before. In fact, he's won it twice before. Mate, how's your week going so far? Uh, so far, it's been the easiest one we've uh, had to do. Pretty happy, so haven't had any issues yet. Now, it looks pretty much the same as it did last time we saw you, but under the bonnet, she's uh, had a bit of a tickle, yeah? Uh, yeah, the whole motor's had a freshen, a new transmission. Um, Higgins ported our cylinder heads, uh, built a new turbo kit for it. Paul Rogers did a new turbo 400 transmission so all been uh, cleaned up and fixed up and going good but you haven't got uh, didn't do a whole heap of testing on this car after you rebuilt it yeah no we went to Heathcote and um, that proved a bit futile we didn't uh, do anything there really never held it once um, and then we went to Calder the next week and um, just crept up on it and yeah it went went real good so went straight in the 7 790 780 then 770 so we knew we were on a good thing so. So how's today gone at the newly refurbished Swan Hill quarter mile? Um, I've never had a car down the track here before, but I've got to say the track's smooth as anything. Um, we put a very soft tune in it, soft launch and not too much power and went down just to make sure we got one run in. Ran 8.09. Wow. Um, and yeah, we've been trying to put more power in ever since and haven't got down the track once since. So <laughs> maybe that's all the track's got for us today. Just going to sort of see, they're spraying the track now, see. If the track comes around and gets any better, if it doesn't get any better, I think we might just pull out and head off. You're not planning to stick around for ages if, you know, push it, push it too late into the day? We found it's a lot easier if you get out of here earlier rather than work on your car till midnight and then have to drive. <laughs> Seems to be a smarter way to go. That is a theory. <laughs> yeah, that's a good theory. It's a long drive, so we've got 600 k's, don't we, or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah this is the biggest uh, road course we've had in Drag Challenge yet, and there's some enormous amount of rain coming. So I hope you have your Rain-X in the God Box. Yeah, the car's right next up. <laughs> That afternoon turned out pretty nice. Yeah, we got our seven, we're pretty happy. What is the numbers? I, I don't know, it was a seven something, what was it? 799 at 174. So he just dipped into the sevens, just. What's your PB? Uh, we got a 775 a couple of weeks ago, so. There's a whole bunch of guys out there running very low eights. What was the secret to getting down to that magic seven? Motec. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah, Mark's a gun on the tune. Look at the data and tune to the track. What's the plan now? Um, we might pack up. We're going to watch a couple more cars go, and unless they go real fast, then we might go out again and turn up a bit more, but otherwise we'll probably head on to Portland, I think. So here with Scott Taylor who is the event director of Street Machine Drag Challenge. We've got 120 odd entrants, 20 staff just at Street Machine, track staff, 
But on top of that, Scotty likes to race every year, and this year actually has a car he's built himself. How's it going? It's going pretty good, mate. You know, I mean, I love this type of event. I mean, otherwise I wouldn't put the effort into organising it. Uh, to me, getting to race as well is the benefit, the side benefit of actually organising it and putting, putting myself all through that pain. But the taxi itself, doing all right. Today it ran a 12-1 first up, so it's getting there. I think we'll see an 11. I'm just letting it cool down slightly. I'm just biding my time. I want to get to that period before it rains, but while it's cool. So, so our best time previously is at 12.0001. 12 0 0 0 9. 3 zeros and a 9. But since then? Since then, yeah, we've changed the, uh, the converter. It's got a new TCE converter in it. It's um, actually got another motor in it. It's like it's a whole different motor since then as well. But stock. it's still a stock motor. It still makes exactly the same horsepower. Like exactly the same horse. It's like 0.3 of a horsepower difference. There's not much difference in it. So look, the plan is to run 11 this week. It's going to do it. We just need to uh, let the air cool down a bit. Because when it ran that 12.0009, it was 3 degrees. It's now 30. And how, how are you finding it in terms of people recognising the car? Actually, well, obviously the competitors all see it, and every time I drive past one, it's sad taxi! Everyone wants the taxi ride. But um, actual public, I think it's become more invisible to the public because it really looks like a taxi now. It's absolutely invisible to the public now. So, yeah. Except when they want to lift. Yeah, except when they want to lift. I'm here with Josh from Western Australia. There are four cars from WA at least in Drag Challenge this year. Mate, you've surprised a few people, I think. You finished fourth overall last night. How's it all going? Yeah, not bad, not bad, getting there. A um, few little hiccups, just uh, spanner checks, you know, the loose bolt here and there, but um, other than that, we're going pretty good. Wow, so no major mechanical dramas yet? No, nah, not at all, so it's been, it's been really, really good. These are pretty wild cars. Uh, how have they gone on the highway? Um, Actually pretty good being turbo, just um, cruising along like 26, 27, um, yeah just putting along, doing good 100, 105, yeah it's been pretty good. 
you're going amazingly well. You put a lot of preparation into it. Um, yeah, I came. To, I've been the last two years, and um, I've basically been slowly picking away at making it drag challenge worthy. And um, so yeah, like probably a year and a half, two years. This has been going for for this event. <laughs> I've been building it. So um, yeah. So if people do want to come along with a bit of a banger car, you reckon they should come along, do a reconnaissance, check it out first? Yeah, definitely, I reckon. I was quite surprised with the things we brought and I thought, we're not going to use this and we actually used it on the, the first few hours I've been here. Um, and yeah, so it's been pretty good with what we brought, what we brought like welders and um, and bits and pieces like that, things we thought we wouldn't use and we've, we've been using it. So yeah, it's been good. And how have you gone here today time-wise at Swan Hill? Uh, 8.53 I think just then, um, it should have been a little bit quicker, um, I had a little bit of a tyre shake but um, I think I'm going to um, go again and um, hopefully get a little bit quicker than that. <laughs> Jerry, you seem to be having a very, very nice event so far. How's it all going? Yeah, it's been going good. Cruising along nicely, getting it, uh, getting it down here and there when we have to. Yeah. What's the strategy? Come out, do as best you can the first few runs, and then get out of town. Yeah, fill the track first pass, see where we're at, and go from there. See if we can put some power in, take it out, or yeah. Can't go after it first pass. You'll, you've just wasted a pass. amazing how the time slips away during the day. Yeah, yeah. I try to get three a day. I'm not going to do no more than that. I'm happy. Whatever we're running that third pass, best out of them, that's when we're going. Yeah. So you're not here at four o'clock, struggling with things, breaking stuff. Nothing, nothing worse. Problems. Nothing worse than that. So, not, just not here to push the car. We just want, you know, last the week out, so. Hey, last year you pulled a big wheel stand on the last day. Yeah, it was a bit surprising. <laughs> Anyway. So there's a bit of work to do after that, obviously. What changes of fixing that stuff and also any upgrades since then? Yeah, I've um, changed the shocks all corners, so I've got all adjustment in every corner now. Um, we've put an anti-roll bar on it and some limiters on the front so the front doesn't come up too high, but yeah. Right. Yeah, so, no, we're, it's all working, so. We went a seven in Sydney through the muffler, so we're pretty happy about that, so. So we hopefully won't see a massive wheel stand at Adelaide on the last day. Oh, if you see a wheel stand, it'll be half track, hopefully. <laughs> Basically, this is all built at home with you and the boys? Yeah, uh, me, a couple of mates, and uh, my brothers helped me out. Yeah, a bundle, so, yeah. It's very cool. Enjoying it. And how much time has gone into tuning that, the, all that new shock suspension stuff? Oh, I did a bit of research on it, and um, pretty much first meeting we had it sorted, so, yeah, it was good. So, so what's the deal? You put it on the scales? And See what? Oh, it's because it's radial car. It's not like that, you know. You need yeah. to get your angles right of your arms, and you want, yeah, you, know, you want to get the rear end of the car work properly. So I'm not giving away too many secrets, yeah. but yeah. So internet, get on the internet and read it up. Yeah, the internet guys, it's going to take off. I tell you, they have the internet in Geelong now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we've got it. Wow. <laughs> we just got gas too. There you go. <laughs> oh, mate, good luck. Have a nice, safe drive to Portland. We'll see you down there. No worries, mate. Thanks, boys. <laughs> Okay, we're here at Swan Hill, quarter mile, with the car we've had a bit to do with. Jason Way, what was the idea behind this project? Look, the idea for the behind the project was to basically build a budget car for Street Machine Drag Challenge. We've um, used a VS Commodore platform with a Barra turbo engine into it. The whole idea was basically 10 seconds for $10,000 and well, shit, today we did it. In a big way, tell the people the numbers. Yeah, in a big way. We were hoping for 1099, it's all that we mattered. We, we ran a 10.5 at 128 miles an hour. Um, it's blown all of our expectations. Um, everyone that got behind us and helped, um, mate, it's, yeah, it's just all come together today. It's been great. 
Where did it all come together in the 60? Yeah, in the 60. We were running, a, we had a best of today of 11 0 with a 1760. Um, today we ran, they said, the 10 5 with a 1560. So it just, yeah, it worked. It's where it needed it. And for kids watching at home thinking, oh, geez, I wonder if I could do that, what's the basic combo? Look, basic combo is the Ford Barra engine, um, turbo obviously. We've done the BTR trans, had it built, uh, converter put through it. Um, we've got, now got a plasma man uh, top half plenum on it, which has really helped. Um, tune injectors. D oh, really? That's, valve springs. That's it. Valve springs, yeah, we did valve springs in it for safety. Um, that's it, you know, there's, there's nothing to it. Set of three, four, five gears. Yeah, that's all, it's great. Jared Wood behind us has have a little bit of mayhem. He's bent a valve, which is in turn scored a pistons, but in true drag challenge style, they're gonna fix it right here so they can motor on down to Portland, which is five hours away. And there is a lot of rain happening. So these boys are up against it, but I bet you they'll be in Portland tomorrow. It's Telfo. It is day four of Street Machine Drag Challenge. We're at South Coast Raceway in Portland, Victoria. Probably the prettiest little drag strip in the country, which also has the best club room in the country. However, the weather has beaten us. It's bucketing down and there's no racing today. The first couple of days racing in, in Adelaide and Mildura were brutally hot, really tested out the competitors. And since then they've had cold, wet and potholes to deal with. But everybody's made it here safely to Portland. They've all got checked in, got their route maps, and now they're on their way to Adelaide. So let's talk to some of them before they go and see how they fared on the drive over. I'm here with Alicia, her of the Black Hatch Q fame. I think you won Dial your own, which year? Second year. Second year. Car's looking very murdered out now. It was pretty evil before. It's, what have you done? Everything. What haven't I done would be yeah. an easier question. Yeah. yeah. Um, we touched everything. Engine, body. Um, I've got coilovers in the back now. Mini tubs. Um, interior. Everything. Everything. It was extremely mean. How was your drive over from Hamilton this morning? Absolutely shit. <laughs> it was shocking. Why? Just rain. It's. I, I was just saying before. I either have to have the window down and be wet to be able to see, or I have the windows up and be fogged out. So, it's it's crap. So what did you go for? Being able to see or being warm? I, I kind of did a half half. So I was trying to, and I've got a rag to just wipe over the windscreen every every now and then. So yeah, I'm, I'm making it work. <laughs> it was 
bit of a bumpy old road too. Oh yeah, potholes were shocking. Oh well, you made it here. Is the car going any faster this year? Not yet. Um, it did go faster in Sydney. I went 11.35. Um, so, but for this um, dial your own, I'm, I'm sort of dialed in 11.5. So, yeah. And how, how do you fancy your chances this year? I'm hoping. <laughs> I think I'm third at the moment, so I'm trying to work my way back up, but we'll see. Right. See what happens. Well, good luck. Have a safe drive going through to Adelaide and Narracourt. Uh, no, apparently we're going to be stopping at Mount Gambier. Okay. Um, and then we might go from there. I don't know. We'll play it by ear. So, All right. yep. Oh, we should see you in front of a should be a packed out audience in Adelaide, and uh, yeah, do some skids and show us what you're made of. Can't wait. <laughs> okay, guys, here with John Kerr, who's the pilot of the Mercury Comet Caliente. He's been at every single drag challenge. Mate, uh, how was that drive over last night? Yeah, it was fine for me. Yeah, no problems at all. Mm -hmm. It's um, ticking along pretty well. It got pretty heavy the rain a bit later on, but yep. yeah, no, no problems. You're driving solo. How do you go sort of navigating in the dark in a 60s muscle car? Uh, when, when you lose a track of the other cars, it's kind of interesting trying to read and bounce and um, focus on it. And then some of the wrong directions that were in there made it interesting. But um, yeah, usually you pick up another car and you figure out where, you, where you're going. And you're cruising with Carl in the Chevy. I saw he had a, was pulled over at the side of the road. What was going on there? Uh, yeah, there was just about 20 k's out. We all got soaked to the bone. It was, um, he uh, melted a battery cable against a header and it melted the terminal off the battery. And I had a spare battery, so we put that in and then we found that shorted that. And then we found the, the cable when we started digging a bit and fixed that up and it's back on the road. Awesome. How's the Comet running? Yeah, it's run fine. Yeah, no, no real problems at all. Sitting on about 4,000 revs the whole way, and sitting on. Oh, today we're sitting on 150 degrees. But even in the hot day the other day, we're sitting on about 185 the whole way. Goes better at 110. When you cool down for the road works, it went up to about, I don't know, say 195. But it's ticking along well. The car is very cool. <laughs> it just keeps on going, going, going. Oh, it's getting a bit slow now. It's it's worn out. I really need to freshen up. But it's been in there seven years. The motor and it's done about 30,000 miles and solid roller and still still ticking along at the moment but yeah it's lost a lost a bit of speed in et now it's due for a birthday just hadn't got around to it <laughs> all right mate we'll have a really safe drive to adelaide and uh, we'll see you down there yeah no worries hopefully it's nice and clear up there it's been a good event so far and all the tracks have been pretty good they've, they've really put it on even portland here got cancelled but they're they're really hospitable so mm. yeah, it's a good good event met a lot of more good people yeah good fun <laughs> yeah lots of newbies this year and they all seem to be having a good time yeah yeah it's interesting when a few new ones and they're sort of learning the things that we've sort of learned over four years <laughs> but um you know it's been been good every year every year it grows and it's just going to get better We're here with the Canberra crew. They're uh, huddled around the fire. They don't seem to be drinking, which is very good because they shouldn't be. Guys, what's the plan now? You've got your instructions yet? Uh, yeah, we got the instructions. Uh, we're just trying to figure out a plan of attack, um, whether or not we start driving or if we do a couple of safety modifications to, um, to get further down the road and then figure out where we're going to stay tonight before we um, make the trek to Adelaide tomorrow. Who needs a safety modification specifically? Uh, I do, and then um, after that, maybe the car. Um, so we'll just go from there. <laughs> You're in a HQ Sandman, well, yes. panel van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what could be safer? Um, uh, w wipers that work, um, possibly a demister. Um, just visibility out of something that yeah. doesn't have any windows. True. Yeah, water leaks. Um, the passengers are loose cannon, like there's just all sorts of stuff going on. <laughs> So maybe buy some hair dryers and try and wire them into the uh, um, into the electrical system. Yeah, that's that's what I did. 
gave them a go and this is the second time I've tried to use them and they stopped working after about five minutes. I can hear the relays click, but the, um, the cheap hair dryers just can't cope with um, what I want them to do. So um, it might, we might just chuck a fire pit in the dash and we'll just um, we'll do it old school. And other than that, how has the van been going? Oh, it's pretty good. Um, the gearbox is starting to slip as well on the change, like even driving it on the street. So maybe we'll have a look at that as well. So um, yeah, I, I saw that there was a, like a historic car museum. So I might just see if I can swap it for like a modern car. That'd be really good. And then um, yeah, just finishing that. So have you cracked a 12? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done. Um, it's done 12s all week. Um, I, it's it PB'd at Mildura, and then it PB'd um, over the quarter at Swan Hill, and then my second pass out, it started slipping. So I haven't um, haven't really given it too much more jandle after that. So you guys actually, this is your first year in the in the HQ van, but you've done all drag challenges previously in the old man's El Camino. Yeah. How's he been going without you? Uh, fine, the thing is reliable as it um, it takes no maintenance. Preventative maintenance, you know. It's done it's, one it, it, meeting and very little street driving since the last drag challenge and it just did it all over again. And a gearbox swap and a couple of other things. Uh, but we did Kudamundra, uh, went up to the Nostalgias to do that, went to test at the Nostalgias, accidentally won the bracket. So, yeah, it's a good thing. You did the flying mile at Cootamundra? No, it was a 500 metre race. So, um, 75 cars, didn't expect to do much, ended up in the top 20, so that was a bit of fun. So how, that's a like standing 500 metres? Yeah, it is, totally unprepped track. Um, so times were a little bit greater, speeds were a little bit greater, but um, actually the way I race it at Cootamundra is exactly how it is now. So exhaust, uh, four three gears, drag radial, so yeah, not too bad, went good. And he's still faster than your son at this stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I gave him my old motor, the slow one. Yeah, yeah, so um, no, I'll keep the quick one until I go a quicker one again and then palm it off to him. That, that is a good kind of hand me down, I think. And the th third wheel, third wheel, the third leg of this tripod, this camber tripod, let's put it that way, is the Celica, the 1.5 JZ, as the kids say on the internet. You're the only one, you're the smallest car, but you're towing the trailer. Yeah, it's actually been going pretty good. I'm really surprised at how well the trailer has towed behind it. It's a little bit clunky. There isn't one of the adjustable ball catches, so it's just clunking around a little bit. But other than that, tows really nicely and haven't had any overheating issues or anything like that. Um, cruise control, that's pretty good, so just set and forget. And uh, is it... 70s Jap car better with the visibility in these horrible conditions than the 70s uh, Aussie car? So as an auto electrician I should have wired a rear demister into it. I didn't and it's not until times like now where you think that would have been pretty sweet to have. I probably should have done something about that. Sarah's over there winding her window down freezing to death because I'm like we need more air. <laughs> but yeah it's been going pretty well. Haven't had any real dramas. <laughs> I went, had a really bad pass yesterday, first one out. Um, ended up being, it was massively too rich. Uh, I turned my water methanol on a little bit earlier to try and cool intake temps down, and I just ended up drowning it. So dialed that back a little bit, and all of a sudden the car went well again and ran 0 0.004 off the first day. So happy days, I'll hand that one in. Alrighty, so obviously with no racing today, no times were recorded, so our standings stay mostly as they were. However, a couple of our big bangers didn't make it through. 
Harry Haig, he spent most of yesterday working to get his gearbox rebuilt. And he got very, very close, but not close enough, and he didn't make it. So he has spent today fishing and was looking pretty happy with it. Very disappointed, though. Jared Wood, he had the heads off his car towards the end of the day yesterday. Those boys worked really hard as well. They actually got the car running, but with the horrible weather, they decided discretion was the better part of valor, and they've called it quits. So there are two, two of our big block guys are out. So that leaves Quentin Feast, number one. Mark Drury Drew in number two. And Adam Rogash in third spot. Day five, the final day of the Street Machine Drag Challenge, right where we started from Monday, Adelaide International Raceway. The weather, of course, in Portland yesterday was horrible. We had a little bit of a break, obviously, yesterday, a bit of respite. We needed the respite. Hot on Monday at, in Adelaide, hot on Tuesday in Mildura. Wednesday started to be a change of the tides with uh, Swan Hill. Probably our best day of the three was Swan Hill. We saw a seven second time from Quinton Feast. We saw many guys going faster than they've ever gone before. And then of course the big travel, the 400 plus K travel to Portland. We arrived with wet and windy conditions even before race day, poured down overnight. And then it was quite obvious Thursday morning yesterday that uh, we weren't going to do anything about getting on the track there. It was just not going to happen. So no results for yesterday. It still didn't make the trip any easier from Portland to Adelaide. All through wet weather we've been driving. We're now back here. It looks like we've only really lost about an hour of the schedule. The track is dry. The track has been hit with the jet with some heat. The track has been sprayed and the call has been going out. And we'll say it now, all drivers, all drivers to the staging lanes for day five of the Street Machine Drag Challenge.
standing at the back of the MPW VK Commodore All Show, but Johnny Pillar, you're not Adam Rogash. Uh, I'm not not Adam Rogash, but I'm I'm a brother from another mother. So um, yeah, me and Adam have got a lot of similar traits, and we we're great you know business sort of team together. Our, our companies work really well together, and um, yeah, so that's that's why you know we we get along well. And you found yourself behind the wheel of this car today. What's that all about? Yeah, well, um, Adam's wife Kelly. Um, is having her third child or their third child, um, a little boy. Um, and yeah, Adam got the call yesterday. Um, Kelly rang up and said, listen, Adam, I feel that, you know, this time tomorrow we're, we're gonna have another child. So on our way um, back from Portland, uh, we dropped him off at the Mount Gambier airport, a little regional regional one, and uh, yeah, he flew out. You hadn't had a steer or, or at least in anger of this car prior to today. So how was that first hit? Everyone, you know, it was sort of saying that the launch will sort of be pretty, pretty wild. And yeah, I loved the launch I thought was fairly soft, um, but it still went 1.3 in the 60. And then I just held it through the top end, but unfortunately I thought the track ended um, where the timing board was like Calder does. Um, so I got off the gas and it went just coasted through it like 850 with 148 mile an hour. So, um, but luckily that was enough to sort of keep us our position and uh, end up third overall. Eight fifty in your first and only hit in the car straight out of the, the blocks is super impressive. So congrats for that and um, and thanks for the chat and also congrats to Adam and Kelly. Hundred percent and and well done to Adam Rogash for building this car in the short time that he did. Um, you know we had hardly any development with the thing. Um, you know such a quick build and for the car to finish third overall, you know, being so new, um, it's a credit to you know, MPW and you know the people around him.
Luke Foley, you've been on every single drag challenge. Yep, every single one. There Tell us something wrong with me. I don't know. <laughs> Tell us quickly what happened the first year. Uh, first year we broke a gearbox between Sydney and Albury. Um, had a lot of problems with the car. Um, from the start of the week to the end, we end up finishing. Um, one fastest without a trailer and spirit of drag week. Um, second year we had a smooth run, which was lucky. Um, last year, was how many are we up to now? Is it the third? Fourth. Fourth, yeah, that's right. So last year we had a good run also, but we heard a motor a month beforehand, so it was a mad rush to build the one that's still in there now, um, out of leftover bits we had. So um, she's a bit of a bitzer. Aluminium blocks, standard cranks, standard heads, standard valves, just with a camshaft, rods and pistons. And we've done 18 to 20,000 Ks on the thing now. And... 140 passes at a guess um, most in the eight second zone and only going quicker so <laughs> Three weeks before drag challenges this year, we sold the old turbo kit off the car and stepped up to new turbos, different inlet manifold, inner cooler and a few other bits and pieces. So this, our first pass was here to test and I drove up from Geelong so with the trailer. So we've, we've got 800 k's on it to test it before we come up here and yeah, haven't missed a beat all week. Absolutely mad. And uh, PB? PB, yep. Um, we end up finishing off the end of the week with an 8.3 at 154 mile an hour, off it at 1,000 foot. Um, but over the moon. So it got started raining before we could do another pass. And, yeah, very happy. Oh, mate, this is one of the toughest street cars in the world, I reckon. I've seen you drive it through the outback all the way home to Geelong. And then all the way here, done the whole thing. And we have been on some really shit roads. Scotty really put us to a ringer this time. Definitely did, so he's going to lose some friends over this one. <laughs> Mate, it's what it's all about. It's proven the car can do just about anything. Yep. And uh, congratulations to you guys. Broken and we can drive it home back to Geelong. So yep. head back tomorrow. And yeah, so I think we're probably going to have 3,000 odd Ks on it by the time we get home or more. I'm here with Alan Vella, who for the third year in a row has won the radial aspirated class in his little Ford Capri, but I think there was a little bit of effort put into things last night, wasn't there? Oh, there was a lot of effort put in last night, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smashed a couple of lifters, broke a rocker arm, yeah. Pulled all valve springs out. So did you almost have to pull the engine out of the car? Uh, no, 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 I've got my engine builder, Damien, BG Engines, yeah. Number <laughs> a bit of a legend engine builder if he's done all that. Yes, he did, yeah, pulled rockers out, yeah. Done a good job. How's the week been apart from obvious mechanical issues? Tough. Other two years, we did, honestly, the car was faultless, didn't touch it. This year, we worked really hard. <laughs> yeah, did you get knocked around a bit in the heat on Monday? Because it was pretty sticky out here. I mean, the conditions were sticky, but the track wasn't. Uh, the car ran pretty good. Like, yeah, it was hot. It was more hot inside the car, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we felt it. We definitely felt it. We had a fight to the finish. Quinton Feast and Mark Drew were out there trying to establish their dominance.
Whitten ran two eight zeros and kind of put an end to the question. Then the rain came, and that was it. She's all done. Jason from Kayak and his XY is just fixing a little head gasket issue, so we thought we'd better stop him and uh, impede his uh, progress. Mate, congratulations. Your first time of the event, you smashed it. Yeah, yeah, really happy, really happy. PB'd pretty much right from the start of the week and then every track afterwards we're PB'd, so yeah, done really well. There's not many people can say that, especially with an old school aspirated Windsor. Yeah, that's it. Um, just running a big solid roller cam and nitrous and yeah, that's the way I wanted to do it. Turbos make the engine bay look messy. How many cubes and how much gas? Uh, 363. Uh, it's only running a small 150 shot of gas, um, but we left it 4500 off the trans brake, and I think that sort of was the key to the time, so yeah. What's that big PB? Uh, today was 1053 at 123 mile an hour, uh, 666 to the eighth um, at 101 mile an hour, which is crazy. It was on a mission right at the start, so yeah, loving it. 147.60, I think it was, so yeah. Loved it. Yep, really happy. And you've taken this from a stock three six cylinder three speed to a real weapon. Last year before drag challenge, about three and a half months out, it was a bare shell sitting on a trolley. It was a 200, three to three on the tree. And I built the whole car to go to drag challenge and then lunched a motor on the Saturday beforehand. So we missed out last year. And then yeah, got this motor built and wow. yep, been waiting for it all year. So here we are at the end of Street Machine Drag Challenge 2017. There's no doubt this has been the toughest event we've had so far, but we got to the end. The rain almost threatened to uh, stop us racing today, but we sneaked through. We got maybe two and a half, three hours of solid racing. Everybody who needed a pass got one. So number one, Quinton Feast. Number two, Mark Drew in the Krusty Trainer. And third, the All Show VK of Adam Rogash, driven on the last day by Johnny Pillar, he took over when Adam went home to Melbourne to be with his wife for the birth of their son. All that's left to do is do the presentations and have a party.